August 6, 1991. CERN, the first ever web page, went live. This website contained information on the World Wide Web project and just what the heck this web thing was all about. That would be the first cog in the internet machine. It's difficult to imagine a time period when a business or service didn't have an internet equivalent. We seem to be in the midst of a web startup resurgence similar to the dot-com bubble that ran roughly from 1995 to 2002. The web-based startup catalog, AngelList, cites over 4.5 million companies in various stages of development looking for everything from employment to procuring seed funding. According to Internet Live Stats, there are over 1.5 billion registered websites, with about 200 million active sites. That's a long way to come in 27 years. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Infographics Show. Today, we're going to take a look at which websites started as simple hobby projects and turned into multi-billion dollar business. Starting at number 15, Coupons.com This North California company was founded by a finance executive, Stephen Bull, in 1998. Bull wanted to simplify the traditional coupon ritual he observed during his father-in-law's journey to the front porch for the Sunday paper. He would take the paper to the kitchen table where he would go to work with scissors in hand to collect the day's coupons. Bull met with a former colleague over coffee to map out on a paper napkin and pencil what would become the blueprint Coupons.com. Coupons are considered a form of currency, therefore manufacturers require strict security and print limits before a digital coupon can be seen as valid. Bull worked tirelessly for three years, collaborating with manufacturers to allow digital coupons into circulation. It finally paid off, with the first digital coupon going live on April of 2001. Eight years later, Coupons.com would come to account for half of the redeemed coupons in the United States, compared to the traditional coupons found in Sunday newspapers. Offering digital coupons for over 2,000 brands, including everything from Coca-Cola to Dove to Hasbro, Coupons.com's estimated value had reached $1 billion in 2011, proving there's always a market for people looking to save money on daily purchases. Number 14. DraftKings.com Estimated at a net worth around $1.2 billion, DraftKings was established by former Vistaprint employees who operated out of their own homes to produce a one-on-one -on -one baseball competition to coincide with 2012's opening day for Major League Baseball. The company quickly raised millions of dollars from venture capital firms and outside investors. By 2014, the company reported awarding $50 million in prizes for the year 2013, quickly turning it into the second largest company in daily fantasy sports. ESPN and Fox Sports took a gamble on the company by entering an advertising deal only to have ESPN back out a year later due to legal uncertainties surrounding the service. As for DraftKings, it seems like they've been placing all the right bets to become a success. Number 13. BuzzFeed Originally a small sidearm of the Huffington Post, in 2006 utilizing an algorithm with no actual writers or editors to cull stories from around the world that were showing stirrings of virality, or in other words articles that could be passed around generating buzz. BuzzFeed has been developed into several branches including BuzzFeed News, BuzzFeed Video, and other various video projects. With even us indulging in their infamous quizzes, it's easy to see how BuzzFeed became a $1.5 billion company. Number 12. Squarespace Successfully building itself as the most accessible site creation tool for anyone to use, Squarespace has made a true name for itself hosting more than 1 million websites as of 2016 and being valued at $1.7 billion. It was originally created in 2003 for personal use by founder Anthony Casalina while attending the University of Maryland. Casalina was the sole employee and received funding from his father plus grants from the University Incubator Program. Squarespace.com was essentially created out of a dorm room. Squarespace has bought advertisements at the Super Bowl every year since 2015, and their logo is featured prominently on the uniforms of the New York Knicks. There's a good chance that if any of these startup companies were created today, they'd be looking to Squarespace for their website. Number 11. Blue Apron Founders Matt Salzberg and Ilya Pappas left their Silicon Valley venture firm to create a startup company. Trying several ideas and raising funds from family and friends, they eventually landed on a seemingly simple idea. Make chef-recommended recipes seemingly effortless to recreate by providing pre-measured ingredients and locally procured food. The two set out to create a sustaining model of working with local farmers and completing shipments within 24 hours of order to make the meal as fresh as can be. Beginning in a small commercial kitchen out of Queens, New York, the first 30 orders were prepared. A courier was then hired to mail those orders across Manhattan. Occasionally running low on ingredients, the founders would have to run to the local grocery store to complete the order. Even though customers have been in a decline due to some controversies, Blue Apron is still holding strong with a value of $2 billion. Number 10. 
PayPal. In the 19 years of PayPal's operation, it has rose to prominence as the go-to money transfer service for small businesses and most online shopping. Originally created by a security software company, Confinity, as a money transfer service to pay their employees, it was Elon Musk himself who in 2000 as head of X.com merged with Confinity to drop all other banking services and solely focus on PayPal. eBay purchased the money transfer company in 2002 for $1.5 billion, with 70% of eBay auctions accepting PayPal payments. Currently, PayPal has upwards of 244 million active users without ever needing to advertise. Number 9. Spotify. This Swedish music streaming service named after a misheard word shouted at the founders was later figured to be a combination between Spot and Identify, now holding 191 million daily users with 87 million of them as paying subscribers and an estimated value at $3 billion. It's made streaming the most popular way to listen to music. Founders Daniel Ek and Martin Lawrenson may have started their billion-dollar streaming platform by sharing MP3 music files between their computers, but their intentions were to always break away from illegal methods of music distribution over the internet. Though the site has received criticism for its treatment of artists, record companies knew they needed to open their catalogs if they wanted to lessen the impact of music piracy on their sales. In exchange, Eck and Lawrenson had to provide 20% of their company to the record labels. Spotify has paid billions to rights owners as a reminder that some pay is better than the alternative of piracy. Launching in 2008, Spotify brings sweet music to the ears of millions for over a decade. Number 8. Credit Karma don't let the free credit report aspect fool you. Credit Karma has earned itself an impressive $4 billion value. Founder and CEO Kenneth Lin, a Chinese immigrant with a background working for consumer credit, felt that people should have free access to their credit and financial data. He founded the service in 2007, creating a simple homepage where customers could only submit their email addresses, and that's about it. Lin knew in order to show interest in his site, he had to gain prospective members even ahead of the beta. In 2008, economic recession hit the company hard, stagnating growth for over a year. By that time, the site was hitting a million members and the company itself was only being sustained by around five people, with one engineer maintaining the entire backend. The growth kept rising as Credit Karma continued to help add features at no cost. They used that money to fund an ad campaign, which utilized employees themselves with little to no acting experience. This San Francisco-based company has altered the way customers interact with their finances, empowering them to understand the true impact of their credit scores. Like the company itself, small details can lead to big changes. Number 7. eBay A broken laser pointer was the first auction won for $14.83 in 1995. When asked by the founder why they purchased a broken item, the winner replied, I'm a collector of broken laser pointers, and thus securing a need for an auction-based site where anything can be bid on. By 1998, with 30 employees, the site has generated half a million users with revenues upwards of $4.7 million. With acquisitions at points of PayPal, Craigslist, Skype, and StubHub, eBay has secured itself with a value of $6.2 billion, with little deviation from its humble beginnings and broken laser pointers for those who wish to bid on them. Number 6. Pinterest the sheer equity of these small sites really starts to shoot up, with Pinterest being estimated at $10.4 billion. Being a fairly young site founded in 2009, operating out of a small apartment, the site grants customers the ability to save images and categorize them on a different board, allowing them to create communities and follow other users. Nine months later, the website had generated 10,000 users. The early popular categories involved home, arts and crafts, style and fashion, and food. By 2016, Pinterest had generated 150 million active users, with 70 million being in the United States alone. The interest in pinning pictures doesn't seem to be dying anytime soon, with expansion still growing throughout the world. Number 5. Twitter 335 million active users make up this $11 billion messaging site. The site originally stemmed from a brainstorming session for the company Odeo in what was supposed to be a platform for podcasts. After Apple launched their podcast platform with iTunes, founders Jack Dorsey, Noah Glass, Christopher Stone, and Evan Williams decided to make something else entirely. The domain for Twitter.com had already been taken by the time the company was founded, so the initial name branded the social site TWTTR without the vowels I and E. The founders and the previous 14 Odeo employees went to work on the new platform, where a text didn't just go to one person, but was instead broadcasted to all friends. And with that, the first tweet went out on March 2006, reading, Just setting up my Twitter. 
Later, the name was properly changed to Twitter from the rightful definition of a short burst of inconsequential information, as well as the chirping sounds a bird makes. Now, one of the largest social media apps popularizing the hashtag, it's difficult to find a person who hasn't sent out a tweet or two in their lifetime. Number 4. Airbnb Founders Brian Chesky and Joe Gebbia were unable to pay their rent after moving to San Francisco in late 2007. In order to make up the difference, they decided to inflate an air mattress in the living room to create a makeshift bed and breakfast. The name stems from this very setup with the Air in Airbnb standing for the air inflated bed that laid on their living room floor. The business was up and running by the next year with their first patrons being overflow from the Industrial Designer Society of America, who were having difficulties booking hotels for a conference held in the city. The founders then got creative, making special edition breakfast cereals with then-presidential candidates Barack Obama as Obama O's and John McCain for Cap and McCain's, being sold for $40 each to generate $30,000 for company incubation. This eventually turned into the $29.3 billion company that has created the leading room rental service, allowing a host to rent out rooms or entire houses. Ashton Kutcher and his investment company A-Grade Investments put a significant amount into the company in 2011, helping the growth exponentially. Recently, the company has announced Airbnb Plus, which vets a collection of homes for quality of services, comfort, and design, as well as beyond, which will offer luxury vacation rentals which ensures that regardless of where you go, there will be a place for you to stay. Number 3. Instagram Founded by Kevin Systrom and Mike Krieger, who were big fans of Kentucky whiskeys, this love reflected in their first iteration of a location-based iPhone app named Promptly as Bourbon. The app was built from the ground up in just a few months, with the concept being check-in at a location, make plans for future check-ins, earn points for hanging out with friends, and post pictures from the meetups. The app, however, was not a success. It featured a clunky design and complicated features. With this failure did come a chance to learn. The creative duo found that the one successful feature from the defunct Bourbon was the app's photo-sharing capabilities. This led to the complete strip-down of the app to a basic core feature of taking pictures, comment on photos, and liking them. They wanted to remain simple, but added filters of flair and variety without overdoing it. On October 12, 2010, Bourbon had vanished, leaving the app known as Instagram. Gaining its name as a hybrid between Instant Camera and Telegram, the app would go on to be purchased by Facebook for $300 million in cash plus an additional 23 million shares of stocks. Currently, Instagram is estimated to be worth over $100 billion and has built itself as one of the keystone social networking apps. Number 2. Facebook while in his second year at Harvard University in 2003, Mark Zuckerberg found that Harvard was lacking a universal student directory known as a Facebook in an online platform. This would have typically contained a photo along with some basic information. The university showed dissatisfactory interest into creating such a directory that Zuckerberg took it upon himself to create Harvard's Facebook, which he had claimed that he could accomplish within a week. He quickly got to work on creating what would be called the Facebook. Zuckerberg found himself in hot water when accused of stealing the idea for a similar social network titled HarvardConnection.com. He insisted that it was not theft but rather a competitive program. Initially being restricted to Harvard University, more than half the undergraduates at Harvard had registered for the service within the first month. Zuckerberg assembled a small team of fellow students to help the expanse to Columbia, Stanford, and Yale, with all Ivy League colleges soon following behind. A year after the creation, Zuckerberg had moved the operation to Palo Alto, California with ex-Napster founder Sean Parker, who insisted on the dropping of the the. This created what will forever be known as Facebook, with Zuckerberg being the youngest ever self-made billionaire at 23, with a net value of $138 billion and over 2 billion monthly active users. Facebook has truly changed the social landscape for years to come. And now we come to number 1. Named after the biggest river in the world, Jeff Bezos had hopes to make Amazon the biggest bookstore in the world. Former vice president of D.E. Shaw & Company, Bezos moved to Seattle, Washington to start what would become the third most valuable company in the United States, behind Apple and Microsoft. Bezos worked out of his garage, writing his entire business plan on a cross-continental flight from New York to Seattle. Founding the company in 1994 with a generous $300,000 investment from his parents, Bezos knew the risk 
warning many early investors that there was a 70% chance of failure or bankruptcy, which nearly happened in 2002 when rapid spending caused financial distress. He closed many distribution centers and laid off 14% of employees. A year later, they had fully recovered, turning a $400 million profit. Amazon quickly went from a singular online bookstore, with the first sell being Douglas Hofstadler's mouthful of a title, Fluid Concepts and Creative Analogies, Computer Modules of the Fundamental Mechanisms of Thought, to the online retailer that sells everything from A to Z. In 2018, the company announced that they had reached 100 million Amazon Prime subscribers. From small beginnings of a book retailer to being a company that earned $177.9 billion in revenue for 2017 makes Amazon the ultimate simple site to create an empire. It doesn't take much for a simple idea to be turned into a multi-billion dollar idea. It appears most companies truly thrive from filling a unique niche that was otherwise not as available. From coupons to picture boards to a social media juggernaut, it's unpredictable what companies will be the next billion dollar site. Tell us what companies you believe are on the rise or which ones you were surprised to see make this list in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to check out our other video, 10 Most Dangerous Hackers of All Time. And as always, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time!